Good morning. Today is Tuesday, October 13th. We are on week three, day two of our corporate fast, meaning no carbs this week. And I don't know about you, but that's stinking hard for me. I love at three o'clock in the afternoon every day, I go into the cupboard and I am looking for something salty and crunchy, meaning I'm usually looking for Doritos. Um, but this week, I have bought almonds instead. Still crunchy, still salty, but a better choice that I probably need to um, continue next week. Because carbs are hard. Carbs gives you the energy that we need, right? And no carbs are things like bread and rice and corn and potatoes. But um, I know we can do it because we have three different tiers that we can choose from. Tier one, no carbs at all. Tier two, one carb a day. And tier three, two carbs a day. And we've already made it through week one of no dessert and week two of water only. So we can do this. Grab those almonds with me this week and, um, and we're gonna make it. So today I wanna look at one verse. It's one little bitty tiny verse in Luke, but it is packed full of theological truth. And it says this, Luke 22, 16, for I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. There's so much in this verse. I'm going to read off my notes a little bit, if you, if you don't mind. Um, but this is Jesus talking to his disciples. And the it he refers to is the Passover meal that was held in the midst of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. All of the Jewish festivals were reminders of events that had taken place in Israel's history where God brought deliverance for his people in dramatic ways. But for those with eyes to see, they were also shadows or pictures that pointed to Jesus. This particular feast of unleavened bread where they ate the Passover meal for most Jews was a celebration of God rescuing his people out of Egypt. But in reality, it was a spiritual activity that pointed toward the identity of the Lamb of God who would take away the sins of the whole world. What Jesus is saying in this one little verse is this, the old covenant is about to become obsolete and the new covenant is about to be established. The way that you have celebrated God's deliverance um, for his people in the past is about to be overshadowed. We will now celebrate out of the new creation realm where the old is past and the new has come. It's important to mention that Jesus says this in the context of instituting a new type of remembrance, communion. This is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. In essence, this is what he's teaching his disciples. The kingdom that you have longed for is about to be established because I am the sacrificial lamb who will be offered up on a cross. By doing so, I will pay the price of sin so that all who believe can be freely reconciled back to the Father. I will be raised up from the dead and seated as the king of glory upon the eternal throne where the enemies who have plagued God and his people will firmly be put under my feet. There's a lot in that little bitty verse, isn't there? For us, because we now live in the new covenant, we no longer celebrate the Jewish festivals. Our act of remembrance is in the Lord's Supper, or what we call communion. And why is it called communion? Because now those who are in Christ have also been seated with him in heavenly places. We have fellowship with him through the tangible presence and power of the Holy Spirit. We ourselves have been reborn as new creations, citizens of the new creation realm and ambassadors for Christ while we're left on this earth. Paul says we've been given a deposit of the age to come through the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. It is this relationship with God's spirit that allows us to fellowship with Jesus in a very real and tangible way. But one day, we will eat that meal again with Jesus. And we read about it in the book of Revelation. Revelation 19, six through nine. 
Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the roar of many waters and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder crying out, Hallelujah! For the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted to her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the lamb. And he said to me, these are the true words of God. You know, you are invited to the marriage supper of the lamb. And that is the good news of the gospel. So let me pray for us today. Father, we come to you today seeking the reality of the kingdom in our lives. Our fast is just that, a means to put to death the things of the flesh so that we might truly commune with you through the presence of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for making a way for us to live eternally with you. We pray for our nation today, Father. We know that there are things taking place in our nation that seem to fly in your face, and yet your word tells us that all things have been placed under your feet. And so we are asking that you would give us your ambassadors, our assignments, and empower us in the power of the Holy Spirit to do what you've called us to do, which is to disciple the nations, to truly bring them into the realm of your kingdom. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice for us. We thank you, Jesus, that you truly are that sacrificial lamb upon the cross that took my sin, that took our sin, that took the sin of our nation upon yourself. We thank you for that, God. And we look forward because of what you have done for us, of, of really eating that meal with you and sitting down in joyful celebration on the day that everything is fulfilled. And we praise you for it in Jesus' name. 